All right, what is up everybody? This is Alex once again for another installment of the EOT News Flash Icori Loaded Set Review. I am back with my lovely co-host Sam to go over all of the green cards in the set. Um, now, of course, if you haven't seen one of these before, we are operating on a four-point scale. We have the ones of the cards you should never play. They are crap. The twos are your more generic filler. Most of your limited decks, sealed, and draft decks will be comprised of mostly these cards. Your threes are going to be your cards that you're going to want to pull your deck into a certain direction for. You're more powerful on commons, removal spells, things like that. And then the fours are the absolute bombs that you'll open up a pack of uh, for a draft. It pulls you into a color. It solidifies your deck. They're your best cards in your, in your decks. And we also have these for build-around cards that need to be constructed in a certain way to get the maximum effect. And as are your sideboard cards that you would only bring in against certain uh, matchups that were more niche, will we say. And of course, we can't forget Sam's art um, category, the awe factor, which you will know the great immediately if she loses her mind somewhat like this. Aww. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, if you haven't already, go back and check out the white, the blue, the black, and the red cards of the set. We'll be wrapping up with the gold artifacts and lands later tonight, so they'll be, I'll be going live. Um, as a caveat, Ikori has already been released on Magic Online and Arena, so this is now kind of after the fact. I've played with a bunch of these cards. We both played with a bunch of these cards now, so slightly biased now that we've seen which cards are bad, so foresight or hindsight is now 2020. So yeah, let's get right into it. What's our first card? Adventurous Impulse. Impulse. It is one green, sorcery, common. Look at the top three cards of your library. You may reveal a creature land or sorry, you may reveal a creature or land card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. If they ever do creature lands, like actual creatures that are also lands, I will lose my mind. There's only one right now. I uh, don't do any more. But anyway, uh, th this card is not good. Um, you know, I mean, in your limited decks, it is serviceable. It's barely above a 1.5, but only digging three cards deep. Um, the potential for you to hit, you know, three good cards that you might actually want or, you know, a card that you can't actually grab like a, like an instant or a sorcerer or a planeswalker really does hurt the efficacy of this card here. Um, so if you do need a bit of card selection in your deck, I'd say play it if you've got to, but there are definitely better ways to go for effects like this. Um, if you're splashing a color, you can certainly play it off of this, but like I said, there are better ways to do this. This is a 1.5, not very impressive at all. There's a critter in that art. There's two critters. One, two. Oh, that is a critter. I think this is a critter right here. Uh, I don't Maybe. Know one. I don't know. An adventure without a companion is hardly an adventure at all. So, they're bud the buddies. It's adorable. <laughs> And now, <laughs> oh my goodness, it's so ugly. It's cute. The other things you're looking at it like, what the heck is this thing? <laughs> oh my goodness, Almighty Brushwag. It is one green creature, Brushwag. Common. It is a one one with trample. You can pay three and a green. Almighty Brushwag gets plus three plus three until end of turn. I am never blocking this thing. If they have the mana available, I will never block this. <laughs> so we've seen a couple of creatures that are like one power, one toughness with Trable before. Uh, Charging Badger was one that we originally saw in original Theros block. And this is kind of in that same vein, but the pump ability does give this some play to it. Um, it's also a pretty decent target for Mutate. And so for to be able to mutate onto this little guy and then still have the ability to pump it is pretty significant. So Brushwag here is is deceptively powerful here. Um, Laugh at the Brushwag is a perfect expression because it means died unexpectedly. Oh. Yeah. Don't laugh at the Brushwag. Uh, this is a solid two. Very good. Um, plays nicely in both aggressive green decks and also decks that are a little bit more interested in the mutate effect as a good base for this. It's a pretty solid card. Is it Brushwag or Brushwag? Brushwag. Oh, it sounds more fancy that way. Brushwag! Because it's like it's got a little total lag. Okay. <gasps> oh my god, it's a giant green pony thing! So it's an elk. It looks more like a pony. Sure. <laughs> it just looks like it had a bad, bad hair day. Um, auspicious Starks. 
Four and a green creature, elk beast. It is an uncommon. Six, six. Whenever this creature mutates, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile X permanent cards where X is the number of times this creature has mutated. Put those permanent cards onto the battlefield and you can mutate it for five and a green. This card is insane. Quite. Um, I have played this. Any any mutate draft I've, I've done, this has made the cut. Um, I currently have a teamer mutate deck, which you've got to play up a little bit today and test it a little bit. This card is an all-star in any deck that you can trigger this mutate multiple times. Like, I was unsure of how many times I'd like to mutate onto one creature. But the thing about this set is, is that the removal is not as plentiful as I would have thought it would have been. Like, you've got the four mana curdle, blood curdle, that is instant speed removal. But for the most part, removal is relatively hard to come by in this format, at least from my experience so far. Um, so stacking up multiple mutate triggers on one creature is certainly doable, and this is one card that actually wants you to do that. The body is huge by itself. You know, being a five mana six six, that's already good. Um, but if this is your mutate base, it's amazing. If you're mutating onto something, it's amazing. Um, the ability to get permanence out of your deck, and it doesn't matter the mana cost of them either. If you've got some massive seven drop or a I don't know, a Planeswalker or Lands or anything. This is going to hit those and put those right into play. This card is insanely good. Solid three. This card is wild. This is a this is a massive draw into Mutate decks for Limited. Insane. Insane. I'll stop gushing about this card now. <laughs> Whoa. Barrier Breach. Two and a green instant uncommon. Exile up to three target enchantments. You can cycle it for two. Um, so this is a card that is sideboard material only. The number of enchantments that are in this set are that are at least impactful. You know, Song of Creation, um, the Jeskai colored one, and then there's the Simic one that draws you cards if you control the creature with, most, with the most power. There's enough targets in this set to warrant this being in your sideboard. Um... Maybe more so if you're playing sealed, I think, um, because you have no idea what you might run into. But if you're drafting in a pot at your local game store and you've seen the draft, you know it's been passed around, you can make a pretty good estimation of being able to main deck this or not. But then there's the cycling effect. That becomes very real here, and this actually bumps this from just sideboard to main boardable. To have the ability to exile enchantments, but then get rid of it if you don't need it. Very, very flexible. This is a solid two. Um, just because when it blows something out, it will blow something out. Um, Capture Sphere is also a great target for this as well. This is a really good card. Yeah. Lots of versatility, cycle in a pinch, and that art is wild. Scary, Scary art. Uh, yeah, this is, a, this is a solid two. I would play this in most green decks. No! <laughs> they call me <laughs> Mr. Pig! <laughs> Bristling Boar, three and a green creature, four... I was about to say beast, but it's a boar. Yep. Um, it is a common 4-3 bristling boar. Can't be blocked by more than one creature. Yeah, this thing is really good in just about any green deck um, because a lot of your green decks will be mutate-based, and this is a great thing to mutate onto um, because most likely you're mutating something on this thing that is bigger than it, and by that point it's going to be able to attack immediately because the bristling boar can already attack when you're meeting onto it, it already can't attack because it's the same creature, effectively. Um, so to put something even bigger on this mutating is really good. Um, alone, this thing's pretty solid, actually, as well. A uh, four mana four three is already playable, so just being a good mutate base is really powerful as well. So this is a solid two. Um, can get a lot better, especially if you can give it menace. Um, then it has to be blocked by two creatures. Then they can't block it at all. He needs it to moan. He needs it to moan. The, the prickly marmoset. <laughs> Solved it. Timon and Pumba! Solved it. Here oh, we go. No! Don't hurt it! Charge <laughs> of the Forever Beast, two and a green sorcery, uncommon. As an additional cost to cast this spell, reveal a creature card from your hand. Charge of the Forever Beast deals damage to target creature or planeswalker equal to the revealed card's power. This is pretty good removal for green you know we've seen plenty of fight cards for green for red this is the first time that i've ever seen a card do this though mm -hmm. 
That being said, it is quite good at what it does. Uh, three mana for effectively a Doomblade effect to kill just about anything as long as the creature being revealed is big enough. Um, and if, you, you know, if you're playing this early on in the game, you might have a couple of really high CMC spells you can't quite cast yet. And that gives those cards some extra utility. So whenever I've seen this cast or cast this myself, it always does what it needs to. That's awesome. Uh, and Boko here is, or Bokos is just, he's insane too. This, this is a solid two, two and a half on here. This is good stuff. I just saw the next card. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's so good. And it's so big. <laughs> it is. It's such a big game. Colossification. Five and two green enchantment aura. It is a rare, I do believe. Yep. Enchant creature when classific Colossification enters the battlefield, tap enchanted creature. Enchanted creature gets plus 20, plus 20. If it didn't tap the stupid thing, this would be amazing. Um, so, so aside from this card tapping the creature you target, uh -huh. that's one problem. The other problem is that it costs seven freaking mana. And it, and, it, and it doesn't give it any kind of evasion either, which is just mind-boggling. So if you can put this on, like, the, the Brushwag or anything that has Menace or any kind of evasion on there, this gets to be pretty good. But seven mana and tapping it is a massive downside to this. So much can go wrong. Um, yeah, not a card I'm excited to play around with, honestly. I'll probably lose to this Unlimited, however, but I'm not going to play with it. This is a... What if you had something that gives all your stuff flash, you flash this onto a creature at their instep, if it clears, yeah. then you start yeah. your... and then you just go boom. Yeah, that's, absol that's absolutely a thing. Um, there isn't a way to do that in the limited format, though. Oh. But you're definitely onto something there. She, I swear, if she kills us in Commander, <laughs> this is where this started. <laughs> um, but yeah, as, as big as the body gets to be, um, this is not something I'm looking forward to playing at all. Uh, this is a 1-1.5. One, one pass this one and pass it often. It is a 10 on cuteness. Oh my god. <laughs> not seen these <laughs> oh my goodness essence symbiote it is one in a green creature beast common two two whenever a creature you control mutates put a plus one plus one counter on that creature and you gain two life <laughs> yeah note that it's any creature you control is already good value this is a great mutate base it's good just to be around it's a two mana two two it's a bear it's freaking adorable. This this is a really good card. I've played this a lot in every mutate deck that I've played, um, and it, you don't even need a ton of mutate to get value off of this thing. You know, if you can just if you get you know two or three triggers off of this thing over the course of a game, you've gotten your value out of it because the two mana two two is already good enough by itself. This thing is just pushes over the top right here. So this is a really strong two. I can't call it a two point five for just how small it is. But there's a ton of value to be pulled from this little guy if you've got multiple mutate effects. Very, very strong common indeed. <laughs> excavation Mole. Two and a green creature mole. Common. 3-3 three, three with trample. When Excavation Mole enters the battlefield, put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard. <laughs> it makes mole hills out of mountains. <laughs> Oh man, it's been a long week, everybody. <laughs> so the the mole here, it's it's a perfectly serviceable card. Uh, there is a there's a minor amount of graveyard shenanigans in this set. It's not something that is really heavily done within any of the color combinations. Um, the one really powerful graveyard card that I can think of is Bokos, the the legendary Sultai creature that you can mutate from your graveyard. And there's a couple of cards that pull things out of graveyards, obviously. Um, but I wouldn't try and use this as an engine for that. Uh, that being said, it's still a pretty decent body for three mana. It has trample. It makes for decent um, mutate targets as well. So it's it's serviceable. I'm not really excited to play this card, but it's a solid two for me. There's enough utility on it that I can get the job done for something. Me. It's such a fat wolf. Is it the bear? It's a wolf bear. 
<laughs> Exuberant wolf bear. Three and a green creature wolf bear. It is an uncommon 4-4. Four four. Whenever exuberant wolf bear attacks, you may change the base power and toughness of target human you control to exuberant wolf bear eh, wolf bear's power and toughness until end of turn. Words. I I don't I'm not really a big fan of this card. It just looks it's a four mana four four which is playable. Um, this weird human clause on it just seems really kind of bizarre to me. Um. Typically, if you're playing a deck that has a bunch of humans, you want to have non-human synergies. And there's not a lot of humans in green. They're in red and white. You know, there's not a lot of... I, I'm not quite sure. Like, this is a very cool a, a, a card, you know, thematically. Um, but I'm not really sold on what it's doing. If you can get the trigger to go off, you know, consistently, maybe you mutate onto this with something even bigger... And then that human gets to have the mutated versions of this power and toughness. That's really cool. Uh, but that feels like one too many bridges to cross to get where you're going. So it's a solid two. I have not seen this card do anything impressive just yet. So maybe I've yet to be proven right. But yeah, not a fan of this one. Look at its tail. Its tail is so cute. <laughs> I like this one. All right. What do we got? Fertilid. It is two and a green creature elemental common, zero, zero. Fertilid enters the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters on it. One and a, or sorry, it, you can pay one and a green, remove a plus one plus one counter from Fertilid. Target player searches their library for a basic land card, puts it onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffles their library. Yep, never target your opponent with this. Mm -mm. I don't know why it's player. <laughs> it's good for commander, I guess, if you're playing like a casual game or maybe two-headed giant and you're trying to help out your partner. That's certainly one way to use this, but this is a pretty decent way to fix your mana. Um, but like I've mentioned a couple times, there's splash in this set across the board. You know, it's I found it rare to play just a two color deck in limited. I want to play a three, four, five color deck in some cases, and this is a pretty decent way to do it. Um, you're going to get a couple activations out of this. The only thing is that you're effectively paying five mana for an extra land. And then seven mana for the extra land beyond that. So it's, yeah. You could target your opponent if you know that they have a card coming up. Like if they had to put something, say seven down in their deck, you could force them to shuffle. That's actually true. That's a really good point. Yeah, yeah. Although I'm not ripping my opponent still. <laughs> that 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 is an interesting thought though. Like just for I maybe mean, not limited play, but for any other game. Mm -hmm. That definitely has some some interesting interaction here. So there's definitely that. Yeah, I've used it like that before. Um, but yeah, this is a good way to ramp your mana at common as well. So it's not that exciting beyond it itself. It's a 1.5. You'll play if you need it, but not very exciting otherwise. <laughs> Everything is cute in this set. <laughs> Rapid. <laughs> Four and a green creature. Antelope lizard. It is a common 3 5. I can't say its name again or I'm, I'm going to die. It enters the battlefield with your choice of a vigilance counter or a reach counter on it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a giant spider. A giant spider is usually a 5 mana 3 5 that has reach, but in this case, you can be a little bit more uh, variable with it. It's not all that impressive, though. It gets outclassed fairly quickly. And it, at least from my experience so far, I've played this card once or twice and not really been all that impressed by it. It makes for a decent mutate base. Um, but there are just better things you can be doing at this point in your curve in a green deck that I, I've seen. So it's decent. It's a solid two if you need something to kind of fill the curve and have some good defensive stats. It's certainly playable, but it's certainly not going to win you a lot of games. So mid-range decks will want this, but not much else. <laughs> Fully grown, two and a green instant common. Target creature gets plus three, plus three until end of turn. Put a trample counter on it. This card's good. This is uh, this is a really good pump effect. I like that it's at three mana as opposed to one mana where giant growth usually is. Giant growth is a, it's a single green plus three, plus three, but doesn't have any trample um, clause on there. So to put this at three mana, 
puts it in a really interesting spot because if you're attacking into your opponent and they've got open mana, at least at three mana, or if they're attacking into you and they've got open mana, there's a lot of things that can come out of three mana in this set. So you've got to really kind of run the numbers and think about what your opponent might have. And this is just a good trick. Very good trick. You know, at that aggressive decks will play this. Uh, more mid rangey green decks will want to play this as well as sort of removal in a sense. And to keep the creature around to have it have trample is also really big as well. This is a solid two and a very good combat trick, no matter what, what, no matter what kind of deck you're in for green. Good stuff. Oh. An angry, it's, a, it's a very pissed off cat. It's an angry kitty thing. Kitty lizard thing. Yeah. Dim Razor, three and a green creature beast. It is a rare. 4-4, four, four, with Reach and Trample, whenever this creature mutates, destroy target artifact or enchantment and opponent controls, you can mutate it for 1 and 2 green. Yeah, so this is a pretty good one. The uh, the clause to destroy enchantments and artifacts that your opponent controls is... It's not going to happen a whole lot, um, simply because... There are the targets are there. They're obviously there. Like all the enchantments that are good, that you can blow up with this are plenty good. You have the crystals in all of the three color combinations that are certainly playable. Um, but from what I've seen so far, the decks that want to have those crystals usually have better ways to fix their mana. And three mana to just fix your mana is pretty rough. So if you've got other, and we'll get to a card that I think is really good at fixing your mana here in a minute. So. You might not have good targets for this, but when you can get those targets to blow up, this thing's insane. And Reach and Trample just give this thing so much utility otherwise. I don't care if I'm not triggering that all the time or even having to target for it. It's just very, very good uh, card by itself. This is a solid three for me. There's a lot going on here that I like. Any, de any green deck will play this card without, without fail. All right. Glowstone Recluse. It is a two green, sorry, two and a green creature spider, uncommon, two, three with reach. Whenever this creature mutates, put two plus one plus one counters on it. It can mutate for three and a green. This is not cute, is it? No. It's spider, yeah. The card is very good, however. Um, the stats are unimpressive by itself, but I think this thing wants to be the mutant. You obviously want to mutate on this thing or mutate with this thing um, because you're automatically getting four or five worth of power as soon as you do that or anything bigger if you've got something good to put on top of it and as a reach threat this thing is really good at checking basically anything in the air um if you if this is your mutate top like it turns into a four or five it checks literally everything in the format except for the big rare flyers everything is checked by this thing it's really really powerful this is a solid three for me the card like this is just wild Good stuff. <laughs> Greater sandworm. <laughs> <laughs> Five and two green creature worm. It's a common seven seven. Greater sandworm can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. You can cycle it for two. Yep. So it sucks that it doesn't have any kind of evasion on it. There's no trample or menace. This is just a big, dumb beater. And the power two or less clause is... It's interesting, though, because a lot of times you're going to... like If you're kind of behind on the board and your opponent has a creature like this, you're going to use your smaller things to chump block it and leave your bigger stuff available to go on the offensive. But by this turning off those small creatures that's not going to happen anymore and you've got to start blocking with your bigger more powerful threats um that being said there's not a lot of times that you've got a lot of two power creatures on the board in this format um things are getting very very big very very quickly so i'm kind of i've not seen this thing actually played except when it gets cycled i've seen a bunch of draft decks online already that are like red white aggressive decks that have all of the, the cycling payoffs, and they play cards like this to never cast them and just so cycle constantly. Um, I have a standard deck built right now that plays 10 cycling cards that I can't actually cast in the deck. that are all the wrong color, but they all cycle for one mana, and that's, what they're, and that's why they're good. So I think, if anything, that's where this card will see a home in. Um, I'm not mutating onto this. Seven mana to be my mutate base is way too much. Um, so in cycling decks, I think this will find a better home than anything else. 
So from there, it's like a it's like a 1.5 because at that point you're just paying for it to cycle and nothing else. So 1.5, and when it does that, it's decent. No. <laughs> Oh, honey mammoth, four and two green creature elephant, common six six. When honey mammoth enters the battlefield, you gain four life. This is just like Greater Sandworm. This card is not very good. <laughs> <laughs> if you've got to have a big top end threat, this is perfectly reasonable. Um, but I implore you to play other things than this. This is a 1.5. It's just big, and that's not very good. <laughs> not good because of that reason uh moving on Ooh. that has a pet yeah he does Storm Dash mentor two and a green creature human warrior uncommon three three when it enters the battlefield put a trample counter on target non-human creature you control you can pay two and a green and tap it put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control with trample yeah so this is the last of the mentor cycle uh this is probably my Second or third favorite behind the one that gives flying and the one that gives menace as well is also very good, I think. So any green deck is going to have a bunch of non-human creatures in it already. And so this is going to have usually have a pretty decent target for it. Um, the only downside that I've noticed in playing with the Mentor specifically is that they have a weird spot on the curve. You, They're so cheap that you want to play them early, but you don't want to play them until you have a target for it. So you're often found finding yourself leaving them back in your hand until you can actually put the counter onto something. Um, and if you are just playing it without the ability to go on the to another creature, you've really put yourself at a disadvantage here, I think. So as long as you can play it to its fullest potential, you're in pretty good shape. This is a solid two, 2.5. Um, for any more mid-rangey green deck, we'll want to play cards like this. Really good stuff, though. That's somebody's grandpa. <laughs> Thing in the tree and he's scratching his chin. There's the the parrot, the, the porcu porcupine. The porcupine. <laughs> That's porcu parrot. Oh, look, he's, he's giving a little, he's giving a little <laughs> Humble naturalist. One in a green creature, human druid. Of course, he's a druid. Of course. He is a common one three. You can tap him to add one mana of any color. Spin this mana only to cast a creature spell. What's wrong with druids? No, 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 nothing. It just explains all the animals. Oh. So it's on the theme at least, then? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, this card's fine. It's certainly not exciting. Um, it is a good way to fix your colors if you are splashing for... for perfect example, my first four drafts in this format, I opened up a mythic rare mutator in every single draft. Nethroi, Bacos, like all of them are just absolutely insane. And this is a great way to fix your mana to be able to play those cards to their fullest potential. Because when you're mutating those things, it's game over. Like Nethroi mutating is no joke in this format. Heck, in any format, it's, it's no joke. Um, so this is, this is a pretty good card as long as you have reason to actually use the additional mana. It's not terribly exciting if you're just using it to ramp because being only able to use it on creature spells is a bit of a restrictive clause there. If you're splashing for like a removal spell or a big flashing enchantment or a planeswalker, this thing certainly is limited in that regard. So it's a 1.5, but it certainly does the job when you need it to fix the colors that you've got. So, and it's adorable, I guess. Next up. Mm, Ivy Elemental, X and a green creature elemental. It is an uncommon zero zero. Ivy Elemental enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. Eh. It's not that exciting, really. It's a good mana sink late in the game if you draw it late, but it's not really doing a whole lot otherwise. It's cool to mutate onto, I guess. I, I, you can say that about most creatures in this set; they're cool to mutate onto. Um, but other than that, it's not that exciting. I find myself cutting this pretty frequently, um, and it's just—it's a really underwhelming uncommon without any extra text on it. So it's a one point five. I'm not. This next card, however. <laughs> <laughs> this one. <laughs> Kogla? Kogla? Kogla. Kogla, the Titan Ape. Three and three green legendary creature. Ape, he is a rare 7 6. When he enters the battlefield, it fights up to one target creature you don't control. When he attacks, destroy target artifact or enchantment. Defending player controls, you can pay one and a green. 
Return target human you control to its owner's hand. Kogla gains indestructible until end of turn. <laughs> this does so much. Yep. <laughs> uh, this is similar to Teamer Sabretooth that's in a bunch of infinite combos in Commander. Um, obviously, this is not Commander we're talking about, but this card is just ridiculous. Um, the only downside is the triple green in the casting cost, but once you've got that online, it's it doesn't matter. If this fights something, it's going to die. This kills all but one creature in this set, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think there's anything bigger than seven toughness in this format. Um, the attack trigger is kind of whatever. I don't think it really matters all that much. If you can do it, cool. If not, that's okay. And I think the uh, the ability to bounce a, a human back to your hand, it's very thematic of like King Kong holding on to the, the, the girl from the movie. Um, this card is just like flavor all over the place. To get it indestructible is pretty cool. Uh, but again, there's that weird push-pull of not having the humans. I guess the, the green mentor would be a good way to go with this. If you put trample on this guy and then bounce the mentor back to your hand and play it again. Any of the mentors, I think, would be good for this. Um, the blue one to get this thing flying is absolutely terrifying. Um, but yeah, Kogla, if not for the triple mana cost, I would be all of this thing all the time. It'd be like a 3.5, but... As it sits, this is just a three. This card is just really powerful. We'll get the job done. <laughs> <laughs> Lead the stampede. Is that Vivian? Um, That's Vivian. That is, that is our girl Vivian, yeah. Two and a green sorcery uncommon. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal any number of creature cards from among them and put the revealed cards into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Yep. Um, if you can hit all five of this thing, your opponent should just scoop on the spot because that's a that that is a this is a very powerful card when it goes off. Um, the only downside to it is that it's only hitting creatures. If you're hitting your lands, your removal spells, your whatever else is, this can be a pretty dicey card to play sometimes. So if you're playing a really aggressive creature based deck, that's where this is going to go, and it's going to be the best card in your deck because you're just going to reload your hand and just go to town. Anything else is going to be pretty dubious. Um, if you're looking at this as, well, I need to find my one bomb creature and you're treating this as something like a pseudo tutor, it's certainly serviceable, but I'm not going to be excited to play this one. Um, but in the right low to the ground, heavy creature aggro deck that can hit, you know, upwards of three targets off this thing each time you cast it, pretty powerful stuff here. So... Very sliding scale on this one, but I'll give it a baseline of a two to go from there. Migration Path. Yeah. Three and a green sorcery uncommon. Search your library for up to two basic lands, put them onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. You can cycle it for two. Yep, yeah, this is another really good example of just good ramp in, in the format. Um, the ability to cycle it is also just extra bonus on this card as well so if you're playing a deck that needs to fix its mana it's maybe it's playing three to four colors in it this is a great way to, to do that and if you find yourself that you've got the mana online you don't need to ramp anymore you can cycle it away this is a really good card to do that um i wouldn't play this in anything that isn't more than two colors um you're probably just gonna waste your mana because you've got more impactful spells if you're if you're a two color deck your deck is very tight and concise if you're playing three plus colors, you've got a little bit of, you know, you might have a lot of really powerful cards in it, um, but you've got to be able to get to those cards first. And if you can't do that without something like this, you're in pretty bad shape. So three plus color decks, those are where this will be at its best, but anything less than that, you probably have better things to do with your mana. Yeah, and you can cycle it away, yeah. Uh, but yeah, solid two, solid two. This card, <laughs> however, <laughs> I freaking love this card. <laughs> Migratory Great Horn. Three and a green creature beast. Common three, four. Whenever this creature mutates, search your library for a basic land card. Put it onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. It mutates for two and a green. Yeah, this is one of those upper tier commons of the set. This thing is just... Th this is an astoundingly powerful magic card here. Because you will never cast this for four mana. This will always be your turn three play in any green deck. You slap this onto a mutate creature and just and you start ramping and you keep ramp and you keep mutating on top of this thing and keep ramping harder and harder and harder. 
Um, out of all of the ramp cards we've seen, the, the Druid, the Migratory Path, this is the best one in the format. And any green base deck that wants to go towards a high end that has any mutate threats in it, this is the card to do it with. This card is unreal. This is I, I might be going over a little bit over hyper, hyperbolic here, but this is a solid three for me. This card is that good. It does so much. This card is insane. Solid three. Solid three. Fight me IRL. Moving on. Oh, don't step on it. Oh no, it's gonna step on it. No, it? he's stepping over it. See, oh. the, the the action lines are going up, so he's stepping away from it. Oh, okay. Monstrous step. Four and a green sorcery uncommon. Target creature gets plus seven, plus seven until end of turn. Up to one other target creature blocks it. Wait, what, what words? <laughs> Let me try that again. Up to one target creature blocks it this turn. If able, you can cycle it for two. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's walking in front of it. The little one goes, whoa, as the big thing walks past it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Wizard safe. Um, this one is a bit dubious because it is so expensive. The plus seven, plus seven. Here's the biggest problem with this card. It's a sorcery. Now, obviously, you have to cast it at sorcery speed to get this this block trigger to go off, which is fine. Um, but that's still a lot of mana to pay for effect like this. Even though you can cycle it away to give it a little bit of extra utility if you don't want to use it. I'm still not super impressed by this card because it's a one-time shot. Um... Granted, you get to choose the creature it's blocking, so not really. No, I'm not high on this card at all. Like it, you're basically it's basically a green doom blade that you can cycle away. So if that's worth whatever, yeah, it, it, it's 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 a two. The more like this, this is a two because this is guaranteeing you to kill whatever you want that can block it, and if it's not trample, that then their extra damage is going through. Good stuff. So we'll go call it a two. I haven't played this card yet. I haven't played, had it played against me, so that's probably telling. This costs a lot of mana to do what it does. Here's another good card. Moscote Goriak. 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 Goriaka. Two and a green. Creature Beast. It is a common 2-4 with Vigilance. Yeah, uh, this card is actually surprisingly efficient as well. The the stats on it for the mana cost is pretty unreal. It attacks and blocks in the early game quite well and makes a heck of a mutate base. Very, very good card. Not all that exciting, but it gets the job done. This is a solid, solid two. All right. <laughs> Mythos of Brokos. Brokos. Oh, it's Brokos, not Bacos. God. Brokos. Two yeah. and two green sorcery rare if... Blue, black, was spent to cast this spell. Search your library for a card. Put that card into your graveyard, then shuffle your library. Return up to two permanent cards from your graveyard to your hand. This is pretty powerful stuff here. Uh, regrowth effects like this are, are are always good. Even if it's you're just paying the two... If without the blue, black mana, this is pretty serviceable, I think. The fact that it can only get permanents, though, is where this card starts to fall apart. And that's where you want to cast it with the blue and the black mana so you can make sure you're getting whatever it is that's in your library that's going to help you win this game. Uh, that being said, this is a do-nothing card unless you can also cast the thing that you get with it the turn you play this. And that, you're looking at upwards of like having eight mana in play. This is a, this is a, this is a setup card, and hopefully your opponent cannot capitalize on you going shields down for it if you can't follow it up with anything. So, powerful effect if you can get the whole thing to work together, but that's a pretty big hoop to jump through. So, of the Mythoses, this is probably one of the weaker ones, in my opinion. It's, it's a solid two because of, of how much power two cards can be. Um, but permanence and then not be able to capitalize on the cards you got back, eh, not great. Bye-bye, Birdie. Bye-bye. Oh no! Plummet! One in a green instant common destroy target creature with flying. Oh, that's it. That's all this card does. Yeah, it's cyborg material. Next! <laughs> I hate this card so much! <laughs> Ram through one in a green instant oh common. God. 
Target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. If the creature you control has trample, excess damage is dealt to that cre that creature's controller instead. Yeah, this is... This card is unreal how good this <laughs> this thing is. I keep saying, well, this is like a green doom blade. This is a green doom blade. This is a green doom blade. Gr doom blade kills target non-black creature. I keep making references and she might not know what they are. Um, yeah, doom blade, one in a black instant. Target cre destroy target non-black creature. Anyway, this is a stupid magic card. I didn't know this card actually existed until it was cast on me in a game. <laughs> and it hit hard um, because my opponent had a death touch creature that used it. And, of course, it killed it. Um, yeah, this card is really, really powerful. The fact that it's instant speed makes this all the more ridiculous. So you can play this as a combat trick. So if you have, like, a 2-2 two, two attacking into a 4-4, four, four, and they're thinking, what are you doing? Oh, ho, ram through, deal it two, then deal two more on the block. This card does a lot. 2.5. Every green deck will play this card. I hate this card. So good. So good. Here we go. That is cool. Yeah. Sudden spinnerets. Yep. Uh, it's a one green instant common target creature gets plus one plus three until end of turn. Put a reach counter on it. Untap it. The untap clause on this card makes this thing real. <laughs> uh, the number of times that I've blown out people who thought they had me on the ropes with Frost Links or Archipelagor... It's unreal that people will attack into this thing. Probably not anymore. They probably learned the tricker trick now. But this card is still surprisingly powerful. Three toughness bonus is a lot. Um, you know, I like using this as a, as, a, as a surprise block too. If you attack and they're like, oh, I'll let it through. But then you get to untap on your block and take out their thing. This is this is good stuff right here. I like this card quite a bit. Um, it's a solid two, and to be able to, and the reach counter also gives it some extra flexibility as well. So, very cool card. Aww. Survivor's Bond. One in a green sorcery common. Choose one or both. Return target human creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Return target non human creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Yeah, again, we see this. I, I, I just maybe am not paying close enough attention to the decks that want to have both humans and non humans in them. And then to have an effect like this. I like the fact that the, the Bonder's also wearing a horn helmet as well. So they're like, you know, buddies, they're twinsies. Um, regrowth effects that hit creatures specifically. Um, I'm not very high on this card, I'm not going to lie. It's if, if you've got... Now, I will say, if you've got some really powerful creatures that, that you can get back with this, I will say, then it becomes pretty flexible... Because, you know, the last thing your opponent wants to have to do is kill something twice. Like a Garuda. Um, so, yeah, this is, this is perfectly serviceable filler. It's a 1.5. Um, just because I, I think there's always better things you can be doing with your mana. But if you can if you can get something really powerful back, sure, go for it. Thwart the enemy. Two and a green instant common. Prevent all damage that would be dealt this turn by creatures your opponent's control. This is this is sideboard material right here. Um, unless I, I I can't really see a big reason to play this main board, but if I'm going up against a deck that is really aggressive and is putting a ton of pressure on me turn after turn, um, to be able to use this to set up some profitable blocks so that you kill theirs but they can't kill yours, that's where this card becomes pretty decent. Um, but beyond that, I'm not super impressed by this card at all. It's sideboard material. And I don't think it can do much better than that, honestly. Next. Ooh. <laughs> Titanothrex? Okay, I lied. <laughs> there is something bigger than a, than, a, than a monkey. There are two cards the monkey cannot kill. <laughs> is it Titanothrex? I... Titanothrex? No, it's Sir. It, or yep. Ma'am. Yep. Uh, big thing. <laughs> big thing! We'll call him Rexy. <laughs> Seven and two green creature dinosaur beast. He is an uncommon 11-11 with trample. You can cycle it for one and a green. When you cycle Rexy, put a trample counter on target creature you control. Yeah, this thing will most likely just be to put uh, trample counters on other things. If you are getting to the point where you can cast 
a nine mana creature, I hope you're winning that game because this will end it in short order. Um, yeah, off, off the top of my head, I am trying to remember if there is a card that brings back specifically cards that have cycling on them. Um, I don't think there is, but we do have, there's a golden common that brings back a creature from your graveyard and has it fight something. And then there's the five mana black spell that brings back a creature from your graveyard with a lifelink counter, I believe. So this is a good target for that. You know, cycle it away and then pull it back later. Um, casting this thing for nine mana is a little bit unreasonable, if you ask me. But if you can do it, you're probably winning. So call it a two. Oh, yeah. I love Vivian. Vivian, Monsters Advocate. Three and two green legendary planeswalker Vivian. She is a mythic. Yep. She has three loyalty. You may... Sorry, I can't really <laughs> see very well. I'm kind of blind. You may look at the top card of your library at any time. You may cast creature spells from the top of your library. You can plus one her and create a 3-3 three, three green beast creature token. Put your choice of a vigilance counter, a reach counter, or a trample counter on it. You can minus two her. When you cast your next creature spell this turn, search your library for a creature card with lesser converted mana cost. Put it onto the battlefield that's free library. This card is insanely powerful. Oh, yeah. um, let's get it out of the way right now. Vivian's a flat out four. Yes, I mean, is. we like Wizards keeps printing these monstrous green planeswalkers. Uh, Nissa, who shakes the world, we've seen most recently. Oko, you know did what Oko did. Um, and these and these planeswalkers just give just absurd amounts of card advantage, and this is just unreal. Um, if at any point you're playing against this and your opponent minuses to it, you are about to lose the game because they're going to put something massive into play and whatever follows it is just as bad. Or it doesn't need to be that. It, you, you, again, it's a two for one. Like it, This card is so freaking good. She makes her own mutate fodder. I mean... Four. Next. Now, this card's unexciting. Uh, <laughs> wow, to go from that to this. Wilt. One in a green instant common destroy target artifact or enchantment. You can cycle it for two. Uh, yeah. This is up there with the uh, the Barrier Breach, the Exiles 3 target enchantments. Um, this is about the same as it if you need a 23rd playable or a 24th playable or if you're in a heavy cycling deck. This will be a pretty good, you know, just filler for it and nothing else. And like I said before, there's enough ways, to, there's enough enchantments and artifacts that you want to blow up. Capture spheres, the rare enchantments, the crystal cycle. There are things that are worth blowing up in this format that you can target with this. So it's an unexciting 1.5. Um, so, yeah. Oh, that's the last green card. There's no more. <laughs> I actually did remember something. Yeah. In this format, there is a card that lets you, or that puts your opponent's card from the battlefield onto the top or the bottom of their library, that would be another good reason to shuffle their library. Oh yeah, Aether Ghost. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Random! I was like, wait, it is she's relevant! Been, she's been playing a ton of standard recently, um, and so it's just like seeing the lights come on for her with all these cards. It's, it's, I'm excited about this stuff. Um, but yeah, where are we with, with Wilt? Um, it's a 1.5. And that's the last green card. Yeah. <laughs> so, as always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, send us, I don't know, fan mail or something. Clicky, clicky, likey, likey. Clicky, clicky, likey, likey. Yeah. C-C-C-C-C-L-L. -C 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 -L -L. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait. Wait, I have to do the... Oh, wait. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Don't forget. Uh, uh, <laughs> clicky, clicky, likey, likey. <laughs> um, wow. So we'll be back very, very soon with the rest of the cards, the gold, the green, the gold the artifacts, and the lands at that point. And of course, don't forget to let us know down in the comments what your favorite cards have been so far to play with this set. Um, Pre-release is coming up soon. We are a couple weeks away from the physical release of Ikoria, you know, everything going on in the world. Um, that's been pushed back a couple of weeks, which is, 
it's it's not been great, but it's letting you know the world get back to where it needs to be. So I hope you're all staying safe out there, and uh, don't forget to check back in when we post the rest of the videos. And uh, we'll be back soon. Later.